Okay, so just let's have a look um, at the tibia overall. Okay, we've looked at the individual features. We've looked at the um, upper third, the mid third, and the distal third. So let's just do a quick revision. We talked about the upper third of the tibia being formed by the medial and lateral condyles, two large areas of bone which form the upper part of the tibia. They merge anteriorly at the tibial tuberosity. And then the tibial tuberosity can be felt palpable throughout the through uh, through the skin, and then the anterior aspect of the tibial shaft, which forms the shin, can be palpable along its entire length. Remember, we've got a small articular surface on the lateral aspect of the upper tibia. And that forms a joint with the head of the fibula, which has a corresponding articular surface on its medial aspect. We also noted that the lateral condyle of the upper tibia overhangs the shaft greater than the medial condyle. If we look at the superior surface, we know that it's got two articular surfaces which articulate with the femoral condyles. We know that there's a raised intercondylar eminence, a raised portion of bone between the two lateral condyles when we view it superiorly. And that intercondylar eminence is bordered by a medial and lateral uh, intercondylar tubercles. Posteriorly, we got a very prominent cilial line and that forms area for the attachment of muscles of the posterior tibia. If we come down and we look at the distal end of the tibia, we know that we've got the downward projection of the medial aspect forming the medial malleolus. If we rotate we can see that there's an articular surface on the lateral aspect, which will articulate with the fibula. We also know that it has an extensive inferior articular surface, and that inferior articular surface will articulate with the talus. Again, posteriorly, we talked about a prominent groove for attachment of tibial muscles. But we can see posteriorly the medial malleolus. We can't see the lateral malleolus that's been removed. Now, sometimes when describing fractures, this prominent posterior region of the tibia is sometimes referred to as a malleolus when a trimalleolar fracture is described. So have a look in your textbooks, have a look online for the definition of a trimalleolar fracture, but certainly it affects this posterior aspect of the tis distal tibia itself. So that's our review of the tibia as such. Remember we talked about the shaft of the tibia being triangular in shape, expanded at its proximal third, and again expanded at the distal third.